Let's keep it real. The vast majority of users out there, and I am including hi-fi and home theater enthusiasts in this statement, an inexpensive or moderately priced anything gets the job done. It does. I know we all like to say that we need X in our system for our own personal enjoyment, but when, when you really break it down, we often can get by with less. And not just get by, but be happy. And that's what today's loudspeaker review is all about. So settle in, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, because we are looking at Yamo's S809 floor standing loudspeaker. Let's get into it. Now, before you go, light me up in the comments. I know the Yamo S809 is not a new speaker. This is not the first review of the speaker. It's not going to be the last, but like the Sony 1080 receiver, the Yamo S809 and other Yamo speakers, they just keep coming up because the brand, well, they focus on designing loudspeakers for people that appreciate good sound and good design, but that don't want to get all bogged down in the hi-fi BS. Now the S809 is the flagship loudspeaker in Yamo's hugely popular S series of speakers. Now you may remember another S series review that we did on this channel when we reviewed the entire S series home theater, at least the one that was comprised of the bookshelf models and matching center. Now the S809 is the flagship tower speaker in that series. And as a tower speaker, it is a two-way design. It utilizes a one-inch silk dome tweeter mated to three five-inch mid-bass drivers. Now the bass is augmented using a front firing slot port that helps give the loudspeaker its reported frequency response of 37 hertz to 26 kilohertz. Now like most speakers in the S series, the 809 is Dolby Atmos ready. It utilizes a pin style connection that works in conjunction with the Yamo Atmos module. Now this saves you from having to run a speaker cable all the way up the back of the tower itself and it keeps things nice and neat. But if you look around back on the loudspeaker and you see two sets of binding posts, this speaker is not bi-amp or bi-wire capable. That top set of binding posts is actually for the optional Yamo Atmos module. The Yamo is made from MDF and comes in either matte black, matte white, or the walnut you see here. Now the walnut is not a real wood veneer, but rather a wrap, but for most viewing distances, it appears authentic. The first thing you're going to notice about the S809 is its looks. It's a good looking speaker. And while the Yamo may be inexpensive, from a distance it looks positively high end. Sure, if you get up close and personal with it, especially in its walnut wrap, you may notice that it's a little bit on the thinner side. And around the edges it may fray over time, especially if you're hard on your loudspeakers. But for the vast majority of people who are going to set it and forget it, this is a loudspeaker that's going to be built for the long haul and people are going to think you spent a lot more money than you actually did. Another thing that you're going to notice is that the Yamo is narrow. In reality, the S809 actually occupies less floor space than our S803 bookshelves sitting atop either our solid steel or Canto speaker stands. So if you're tight on space but are dead set on having a tower loudspeaker, the S809 is going to be worth a look. Plus, its front facing port enables it to be placed closer to your front wall while still giving you great bass response, not to mention great imaging without having to bring the speakers too far out into your room, which is another plus. Now the S809 is one of the few loudspeakers that I actually like the look of with the grills on, though I do appreciate the attention to detail the Yamo designers paid to the drivers themselves. The contrasting surrounds not only hide the mounting hardware, but they go a long way in dressing up the look of the speaker itself. And in the black or white finish, the wood detail that surrounds the tweeter, that's just sexy. One area on this loudspeaker, however, where I kind of feel like Yamo made a bit of a departure, at least stylistically, is the feet. While they are functional and they do keep the speaker from becoming all tipsy, they just don't quite match the rest of the look of the speaker itself. Before I dive into the S809 sound, know that we have tested this loudspeaker with a wide range of electronics, specifically NAD's T778, which we have just reviewed on this channel that you can go check out after this review, Musical Fidelity's M5SI, as well as Yamaha's S1200 integrated. Now, you do not have to spend this kind of money in order to drive these loudspeakers, or 
any YAMO speaker for that matter, as we have been quite pleased with the results that we've gotten from more affordable electronics from the likes of, say, Sony, Yamaha, Cambridge Audio, even Arillic. So while any amplifier is gonna put its own little unique spin on the Yamos sound, for the most part, the, the Yamos are just easy to drive and pair well with a wide range of electronics. With three mid-bass drivers and a reported frequency response reaching all the way down into the mid-30s, the Yamos are not a loudspeaker that I would call, well, bass heavy. Their bass is more about speed and attack than rattling your walls. So kick drums are gonna have really good impact and detail, but they're gonna lack a little bit of weight. Now, the best amplifiers that we have in-house for extracting the most bass out of these loudspeakers were the Yamaha S1200 followed by the Musical Fidelity M5SI. Either one of these amplifiers, along with the loudspeaker just being a little bit closer to the wall, gave us satisfying enough bass that I didn't feel a sub was required, at least when listening to music. Now, for you home theater users out there, I would definitely recommend that you pair the S809 with a subwoofer. Now, we paired ours with the S810 from Yamo and found that it worked very well, though costlier options from the likes of SVS and RHEL did work better, or sounded a little bit more refined in direct comparison. Still, on a whole, the bass from the S809 is punchy and a little bit forward. It's just not earth-shattering in terms of its depth. Because the Yamo has a little bit of a smile-like shape to its frequency response, that is to say its bass is a little accentuated, high frequencies are forward, detailed, punchy, again, accentuated, the mid-range is gonna seem a little bit lean by comparison. So dialogue or vocals are gonna have great detail, not to mention presence, and that the artists are gonna feel like they've stepped several feet in front of the loudspeaker and physically joined you in your room. They're just not gonna feel as planted as what you may encounter through some other loudspeakers. So again, great detail, awesome presence, a little bit light on weight, but if you value intelligibility above all else, you're not gonna be disappointed with the S809's mid-range. Now the high frequencies were far more extended and pronounced than what is typical of soft dome tweeters. It gives the Yamo a livelier sound and it's an engaging sound, one that is able to be enjoyed at low and moderate volumes just as it can be at high ones. Now, at higher volumes, at the extremes, the high frequencies can become a bit thin or exhibit a little bit of glare, but keep things within reason. I don't think you're gonna run into any of these problems. But I'm not gonna say that the high frequencies are class leading, they're, they're not. But for what they are, they're very good. And they fit the rest of the speaker nicely and help to give it its signature sound. Now one of the best things about this loudspeaker is its raw dynamic punch. Sure, I would have preferred just a little bit more low end impact, but on a whole, I have really enjoyed its punchy presentation from top to bottom. This is a great speaker for movies as well as music, especially if you're a big fan of pop or rock music. The other surprising aspect about the S809's performance is its ability to image. The soundstage that these speakers are capable of recreating is shocking. Center image is fantastic, though I will argue the center focus is better than the focus you'll find throughout the rest of the soundstage. Still, these speakers will obliterate the boundaries of your room and disappear orally within a very nicely appointed soundstage. Now you can easily build a home theater around the S809 loudspeakers and as part of an entire home theater system, especially one that has a capable subwoofer or two, they just rock. In fact, the entire S series from Yamo for home theater, they're just hard to beat at this price. What you need to take away from this review is this. The S809 is not a neutral loudspeaker. It's lively, and fans of bass are gonna definitely want to add a subwoofer. Now, there are people out there that are criticizing this loudspeaker and saying that it lacks coherence. I disagree. I really do, I disagree. Yes, it has a pronounced bass response. It's a little lean in the mids and it's definitely tipped up in the treble. But again, we know that it is a lively speaker. It's a fun speaker rather than one that comes off as neutral or flat. Now I'm sure some of you are wondering, how does the S809 compare to the Yamo's own C97 Mark II, which we've talked about on this channel and you know that we are owners of. And the C97 Mark II is the better loudspeaker. And I do think that it is worth the extra money to upgrade to it if you can find a pair because they continue to be elusive. But yes, the C97 Mark II is the better loudspeaker. It, it's just more detailed and more controlled throughout. Not to mention, it just has better bass response in direct comparison to the 809. That being said, if you are eyeing the 809 in its walnut finish, I do think that the 809 is better looking 
than the C97 Mark II, not to mention if you're tight on space, the S809 is more compact. Now, speaking of compact, there are three tower loudspeakers in the S series. Now, the S809 is the largest of the three, and if you don't have the space to add a subwoofer, this is the speaker you're gonna want to go with because it has the best bass response of all three. But if you have the space to add a subwoofer, I do think that you could get away with the less expensive S807 or S805. Again, mated with a subwoofer and come away with either the same or better sonic experience. Now, stepping away from Yamo loudspeakers, another comparable loudspeaker has to be the Fluence Reference Series Towers. Now, in terms of absolute bass extension and mid-bass weight, the Fluence Reference Series are just going to crush the Yamo S809s. But, but the Fluence do need quite a bit of space, not to mention a pretty beefy amplifier to control that subwoofer driver in order for them to sound their best. If you don't do either of these two things, you may find the bass to be overwhelming or fat. And they're just physically imposing, which might make the S809s a little bit better fit. Aside from Fluence, another comparable loudspeaker is Q Acoustics 3050i. Now the 3050i and the S809 actually have a lot in common sound-wise. The 3050i's are going to be just a little bit more laid back, have a little bit more mid-range fullness to them, but they definitely lack the S809's top-end detail. Now, the 3050i's do play deeper, or at least come across as sounding like they play deeper, but in reality, both loudspeakers really do require you to have a subwoofer. And knowing that, you can pick up a pair of S809s and a subwoofer for the price that Q Acoustics is asking for just a pair of 3050i's. The Yamo S809 floor standing loudspeaker isn't perfect. It's not a giant killer. It doesn't attempt to punch above any class or do any feat of hi-fi heroics. It's just an honest loudspeaker. One that has been voiced to appeal to the widest range of listeners, both enthusiasts and non-enthusiasts alike. And while it may have been designed for mass appeal, it still has a soul. It's alive. It's, it's down for whatever. And that is what makes it great. Then it just looks brilliant. Let's face it, Yamo knows how to design a good looking loudspeaker. And well, the S809 is one of the better looking affordable loudspeakers on the market right now. Frankly, it's a speaker I'm always happy to listen to and I'm even happier to recommend. So that's it. That's my review of Yamo's S809 floor standing loudspeaker. What did you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, I have a question for you. Is the S809 good enough to be your forever loudspeaker? Or what affordable loudspeaker have you secretly loved and considered high end and well, you just are content with living with. Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you guys have been showing your support for this channel and the work that we do here, and we thank you very much. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File, and that's it. Another review in the books, so remember, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. Happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye. I was trying to remember that. That's okay. It sounded like you said pacifically instead of specifically. I might have said pacifically. I think you did. Uh, okay. Like, did he just talk about the ocean? <laughs> Pacific Oceanly. We have... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. Before I dive into the S809 sound quality, know that we tested this speaker with a wide range of electronics. Specifically, the NAD T778 receiver, Musical Fidelity's M5. What? That was good. It, it's fine. You weren't that far into it. Oh, I want you to throw back to the when you mentioned the NAD. Mm -hmm. Be like, which we just reviewed on the channel. If you hadn't watched okay, that, okay. be sure to catch it. All right. You got it. <laughs> <clears throat> Here we go. Always be closing. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Love you. Love you too. <laughs>